Uh, hello everyone, Petr Echewinch here from Vikefinalsis.com. I want to post an update on the USD Japanese Yen, also on the EURUSD and GBPUSD. Since I covered, um, um, uh, you know, I posted an analysis uh, about the USD Japanese Yen, my positioning on this. I have the two buying positions on the USD Japanese Yen, as you know, uh, from the um, 108.10 uh, level. And right now I'm in plus 1 to 2 ratio, uh, I'm in plus around 100 pips, and I secure my position on the break even. So I'm awaiting the price of 100, uh, 110.40, which is the where is the some uh, near some critical resistance um, at this stage here. As you know, the previous uh, the swing lows became um, will for sure be a very very strong resistance. So I don't want to chase the market. I want to close near this area and book some profit. That will be around one one to four risk reward ratio on the first transaction if I'm and the price will go um, um, achieve that level. My second. Uh, position take profit. Uh, my uh, my take profit on the second position is around 111.90. Um, so um, that's um, like um, 150 pips more than the original first take profit level. Um, anyway, again, the reason for this entry and um, it's absolutely pure volume price action analysis um, and intermarket analysis. Um, so we got a strong. Um, this is a widespread bar in a very high volume. Also, that was an ultra high volume on the uh, futures market. Uh, it was a first sign that, that we may see something interesting there because the smart money like to see the large liquidity. Uh, but it's still uh, not tradable at this stage here. So we need to wait the confirmation and so on. So we need to see the successful test and the supply actually losing the power. So the demand, the buying positions um, are safe and the smart money can buy. Um, and the very next bar after that climatic bar is this some form of the uptrust, but bar um, closed near the closing of this widespread bar. So it didn't went any lower than this. This is a first sign that we may see the bars in the next period step in and that we may see some successful test later on. And that exactly happened in the third bar, this bar here, the narrow spread of the bar closing in the middle. Uh, the futures market also confirmed that, um, you know, uh, and uh, this was a successful test. So you, as you know, the strength appears on the down bars. Um, professionals will, you know, the real syndicate traders, the professional, the smart money, will never buy on some large up bars or on some bullish bars or sell on the low, on the down bars. The point is, um, it's. It's just too late if you wait a lot. You must know that because, um, you know, I see that a lot of traders uh, are waiting too much to establish positions. That's of uh, that's mainly because the lack of knowledge went to establish positions and to the lack of the real knowledge they need to focus on. But um, the point is, for example, uh, you don't want to, for example, look at this, look at this bar here. This is a strong supply bar. But the professionals actually bought into this the next day and they bought something, you know, and they hold for a day's price went 200 pips. Then we lost, we, we saw the no demand bars, these two in a row, no demand bars and the supply came in. So you want to sell near this area. Um, uh, you want to sell on the up bars, you know, on the no demands, on the up trusts, you know. But of course, you must know to you know, must know to recognize the um, the background because it's very important to understand the background. Also, intermarket coloration is very important together with fundamentals. But like ninety percent is actually technical uh, intermarket analysis and the volume analysis work. But this about ten percent, ten to fifteen percent about the fundamental aspect uh, to take care of interest rates and so on and how they reflect on the price action. That can also um, reveals you uh, some um, um, puzzles and can really help you um, to uh, create a better position and um, you know the, the, the much safer position and that's actually the key part to do analysis to enter the safest place is possible where is the where you have the highest risk reward potential that's absolutely what you are what the professional traders are doing that's what every every trader should focus on to establish positions on the safest place, on the to have the very good timing of entry, the timing is very important. 
to don't be late or too early. That's a that's a something you need experience and practice and to the right knowledge to achieve that. Because a lot of traders or they're late on position, they know up or let's say they, they they know about some direction where we may go for some currency pairs, but they're late in, in um they're late in uh, intersection and that causing them to uh, put a larger risk and so on and so on and you know it's it's just bad. Um, or if you're too early in position, that's also bad because you didn't wait. For example, if you want to buy, you need to wait. That supply uh, disappear or or the if or to wait that there is a very little supply left. So the most possible um, direction is the bullish if there is no supply. That's absolutely um, you know expectable, and that's exactly what happened to US Japanese yen. Okay, so if I didn't saw the successful test and um, the volume dr dries out, you know, um, uh, the volume uh, decreasing and so on on this testing, I will not distinguish any position here pretty much. I will not be a seller for sure because I don't sell on the down bars. Um, and um, especially on the lowest low points on the US Japanese yen. So, uh, if I didn't so successful test and you know the the decreasing in volume, I will not build anything. But since I watched this carefully, um, I also watched the Nikkei index. Uh, it's going higher. It's found some bottoming there. Um, futures market confirmed. The forex market confirmed. So everything is in line. And these setups are the high probability setups. This setup offering. Um, offered a very potential good high uh, risk reward ratio at the first take profit one to four. It's a very, very, very strong risking point five to take 2% in the first transaction. It's a very, very strong. So this is what you focus on. And this is wh what I like. And this is my bread and bread and butter setups looks like this. When we have the intermarket coloration positive, the volume confirming that the volume analysis is correct. The price section confirming that. Together, we got a very, very good position. As you see, uh, it's going very good. That, um, and now let's go to the USD. So again, on USD, and I'm waiting 110.40 and 111.90, like a second take profit. But take profits are adjustable. And if I see that we, that buyers losing the power, that there is some supply coming in or something like that, I may book some profit and lock maybe one transaction like the second or something like that but for now everything is good now let's go to the usd since we got a very very strong supply today and price dropped around 100 pips this is also what i expected yesterday and um, a lot of traders waited the breakout higher and uh, they told that the usd may go higher because they found uh, some trends as you see i marked this one for you to just explain you that um, you see we have, we got the, um, a higher swing lows, higher swing lows, higher swing low, higher swing low, um, and you ex we broke the swing high this ditch here, and you expected the price will continue higher because we have the intermediate and short term upward trend. In reality, um, I will tell you something about the trend. Um, trend backing in like like hundred years ago, if you traded. Um, it was much more stronger. Trends today, um, uh, in the where we have a lot of speculators and market makers, the trends and trend systems are very very vulnerable um, because we will have about fifteen percent only trending markets, and rest of them it's supply and demand fighting. You know. So, um, you know, trending strategies and building uh, uh, positions are just because of the trends and so on, it's not any more good like it was like backing into, like say 100 years ago where you didn't have so speculative market. But today this enormous amount of, um, of money involved here in this business um, uh, also attracts a lot of speculators. Uh, that's the the that side of the uh, you know the lot of the biggest the market the biggest speculation you know so 
Um, on the Forex, there is a lot of speculators, uh, the investors and in hedge funds using the Forex to hedge. Um, they using uh, to speculate, you know, large positions and so on and so on. So uh, to watch a trend and trade according to that, no, you must watch the what the market is telling you and you, uh, you, you should read the, the impulse of the market and the activity of the market of the smart money and try to predict their next steps and what we may expect using the volume price action analysis, combining the intermarket analysis and fundamental analysis. Um, the more clues of the puzzles you have, the better and safer setups you, you can establish. Of course, it, uh, there is nothing perfect and you will have the losses, of course, that's normal integral part, but with your good risk reward ratio you keep in every transaction and, and, and keeping the uh, account safe, trading the uh, low risk, that's it's you know this is a just equal to success so correct money management a risk control together with inter uh, to uh, volume price action analysis and intermarket analysis including also some fundamental uh, factors that bring that bring you good uh, that brings you the very very strong approach and professional approach um so usd uh we got here i i told you yesterday on my video, I alerted also on the InstaForex TV link up that we may see the USD downward. Why? Because I saw the demand here pretty much, uh, you know, um, becoming very, very weak. And demand became very weak. Look at these bars closing in the middle here. Um, you know, this is something what, uh, what the market don't like. This is a sign that, that sellers may step in later on. Um, so we have also this, but this is still some strength because the bar went lower than closing in the middle here and strength came in, then up trust on the high volume. This is a big s s uh, sign of the weakness because price went higher, broke out the swing highs, then back lower, strong sign of weakness, the next bar is up, so there is nothing here. And then you have this up trust with the next bar today downward. And this is a potential starting of distribution of the smart money it can lead us to the lower price potential 1.1170, like the swing uh, swing low area here is cluster, and maybe even lower and lower, depend on the uh, news and fluctuations and how that will reflect on the smart money and so on and so on. But the point is, this the the weakness in the background uh, resulted this drop, and the seller stepped in because there is when there is no um, demand left when there is no demand left and where is no in professional interest for the upward the only way the price can go is slowly and steady to go downward later on when the sellers step in and so on okay and that's exactly what happened also we broke this upward um upward channel here we broke this diagonal here so this is potentially something of um, changing it in the trend dynamic on the shorter frames to the mid-term frames. Um, but the first take profit, 1.1170. One, one, uh, so be careful when, again, buying and watch for potential selling points on the rallies um, on the short-term perspective. And the pound, the pound is a much stronger than the euro and the pound got successful test. The pound reacted from, the res uh, from the, this cluster and this is some form of the test here. Uh, also, the pound reacted very uh, opposite from the what the crowd expected because I remember about a few days ago we got uh, very very bad data for for the GBP, and you naturally expect if you have very very bad data number. I think it was a, like manufacturing very very bad a few days ago, manufacturing production something like that, and price reacted actually higher and it didn't have power to go lower even on the very, very bad news. It's a big sign that there is no professional interest for the downward price, uh, confirming that the price action confirmed the support and we got successful test. Also in this bar, we got a strength came in, a bar on the widespread closing in the middle on the high volume, this must be a strength. Then the next bar is down, but this thir third bar is a test bar and the price directed higher one, 240 pips. Um, anyway, we have some weakness appeared yesterday um, here because bar closed in the middle, but today we see that sellers try to go downward according to in 20 hour like 65 pips, but now the demand is back in here and 
since the background is still the bullish because in the background we got successful test of support strength and successful test of the um uh, of the supply the one bar doesn't the one bar this is a sign that you actually let's say if you didn't close here you can close here this is a sign that you can close let's say you're buying position from this stage but this is also a sign that you need to secure and put the stop loss for it. let's say original was here if you enter it here and you put in the break even so this supply came in is a sign that you need to or close or put stop loss and break even and wait your potential targets but this is not a sell signal at all one bar we don't you never want to trade according to the one bar you want to find the, uh, the background and what's in the background and read that activity and understand what's is active right now in the background the seal is active the strength strength is active because of this area here and one bar here cannot change that this is a temporary supply came in and um, we may see the upward continuation because pound is really strong comparing to the euro that's it for this analysis again um, I hope you enjoyed this analysis my advice is to start my mentorship program seven days curse we're doing day by day um, slowly we start with the first day of a mentorship program is supply demand zones in the clusters how to establish the major supply demand zones what are the major what are the sub majors clusters and the se the next day the second day mentorship program is about the volume analysis the basics of the volume then the third day is the advanced volume analysis using the Vike analysis in the volume spread analysis together then the fourth day we're also covering the Fibonacci work and the multi Fibonacci work because this is also very helpful for us because we have we, we can uh, have some pretty um, determined uh, uh, targets and um, it can help us also in the stop loss orders um, then we starting with intermarket analysis analyzing the futures market the stock market together um, and how the news reflects like interest rates and the um, you know the GDPs and all how that reflects in the price action and how we that how we use that um, into our favor so that's together one whole cycle in the financial world and if you want to really establish the quality positions and trade safe and establish the high risk reward uh, setups you need to understand volume price action analysis together with again fundamental aspect and intermarket analysis um, if you like my analysis feel free to subscribe on my youtube channel also join on the discussion on the, my uh, trade on the forex factory the art of trading by petr serbia um, you can add me on the skype uh, if you're interested in the mentorship program my uh, skype username i will write in the description of the video and um, that's it for now i hope you enjoyed i wish you good trading and have a nice day